Hey guys, and welcome to another C++ in game tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you a concept called polymorphism. And it sounds like it'd be a hard concept because it's a really confusing sounding word, but it's actually not that hard at all. First, I'm going to show you why we would need polymorphism. I'm going to give you kind of a, an in-game example for why we would need it. And then it'll make a lot more sense to you and you should be able to use it in your games. So I've made a few additions to our uh, previous uh, little monster uh, inheritance thing. So we have our base class monster, it's the same as it was before. And we also have our spider derived class that derives from our base class monster. It does everything monster does uh, because it inherits from the monster, but it also adds its own climb function. And remember, you always have to redefine the constructor uh, whenever you inherit from a base class, and your base class needs to have a default constructor like this. And then I also created a goblin class, which, like the spider class, it inherits from monster and Unlike the spider class, it doesn't have a climb function. So it basically does everything a monster does. It's nothing special. It's just got its own constructor. So you could imagine there's maybe some, some other functions in here. Uh, I just haven't really added them. So down here, here's our main function. We have a spider and a goblin. We have Matthew the spider and Sebastian the goblin. And we have a game loop here that's going to loop through and update the spider and then update the goblin. So we're going to move, attack, and climb the spider and then move and attack the goblin. So let's go ahead and run. And if I zoom in here, you'll see we get uh, the correct output. Matthew is moving, attacking, and climbing, and then Sebastian is moving and attacking. And if we uh, keep going through the game loop, it'll keep playing. So we can imagine that there's a bunch of really cool stuff going on screen. Our Matthew the spider and our Sebastian the goblin are doing some cool AI and maybe attacking the player. All that jazz. But what happens if we want to add, like, 100 spiders and 100 goblins? You know, we, we can't manually add them all in. We want to be able to dynamically create them. We want to have spawners that can create them. So we can't just write spider.move spider and goblin.move in here and all that. Uh, so what we want to actually do is have a list of all of our monsters and loop through our list and update each of them one at a time. And what that would be is basically just a for loop inside our while loop that loops through a global list. Now. Right now, we have a goblin class and a spider class, so normally we would have to loop through all of the goblins and update them, and then loop through all of the spiders and update them. But instead, it would make a lot more sense to just loop through all the enemies, right? A spider is a type of enemy because it inherits from the monster class. A goblin is a type of enemy, or sorry, a type of monster. A spider is a type of monster. A goblin is a type of monster. So we want to loop through a monster's array and update them all. And that'll make it so that our while or our game loop is really tiny and we can update an arbitrary number of monsters. It's really great. And also we don't want to have all of these uh, different uh, functions in our in our main game loop. So what let's what we should do first is we should create an update function in each of these classes. So the spider update function will call these three functions and the goblin update function will call these two functions. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to say void update like that. So in the goblin class, I'm just going to say move and attack. So let's delete those. And we're going to say move and attack. Now you'll notice we don't have a move or attack function in the goblin class. These are monster class functions that we are deriving. And that keeps us from having to copy paste everything in goblin and spider. And that way, if we wanted to change our global move function, we could do that. Uh, and it would reflect all the changes in all the classes that it derives from. Now, our move function might be different for a goblin or a spider or something like that. In this game, it's not, but it might be. Uh, for instance, the climb function is different because the spider has it and the goblin doesn't. So, in, like, for instance, in this case, our update function is going to be uh, different for the goblin and the spider. So void update, like that. So it calls move and attack and climb, just like that. So now they both have their own update function. So if we wanted to write it in here again, uh, the same as it was before, we would just say spider.update and goblin, goblin.update. Like that. And now it's much cleaner than it was before, right? We have a lot less uh, code in our main function, and it, uh, it just makes more sense uh, logically, because we just want to update the spider and update the goblin. We don't care what goes on inside, necessarily, when we're looking at the main function. Okay, so now let's do that for loop I was talking about uh, using our global list. So I'm actually going to make it a list in the main menu. Now, you might want to use a vector. It depends on what you want to do. I'm going to use a list because it's easy to remove elements in the middle of a list. It's a fast operation. So, first we need to include list, because I know I haven't done that. Include list. Okay, so let's create a list. So we're going to say list, and let's make a list of 
enemy. Now, sorry, monster. I keep saying enemy. Now we want to make a list of monster pointers. We don't want to make a list of monster objects. Because remember, if we create, for instance, this spider here, we want to just add it to the monster list. We don't want to add a copy of it to the monster list. So what we're going to do is pass a pointer to the spider. Now you're telling me, well, Ben, this is a monster pointer. This is a spider, not a monster. Well, that's what polymorphism is. Polymorphism means that you can assign a pointer of type monster to, or sorry, you can, ass you can assign uh, the value of a spider class to a monster because it derives from it, a monster pointer. So we could say list of monster star uh, monsters. So this is all the monsters in the game. So we could say monsters dot uh, push back with spider and monsters dot push back with goblin like that. So actually it needs to be address of spider and address of goblin because we're passing pointers to them. Okay, so let me explain what I just did. So I created a list of monsters. This is going to hold all of the monsters in our game so that all we have to do in the main loop right here is just loop through this monsters list and update them all. That way if we remove or add monsters to the list, it gets reflected in our main game loop really easily. So I've created our Matthew and Sebastian, uh, and they're both a type of monster, but they're actually a spider and a goblin. They inherit from the base class monster. So what we can do is we can push back a pointer to spider and a pointer to goblin to the monsters array, even though it's an array of monster pointers. Now if this was array, an array of spider pointers, then this wouldn't be correct. This one would work, right, because it's a spider, but the goblin is not a type of spider. However, they are both types of enemies. So this is going, or, God, monsters. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say enemy every time. Okay, so this is going to work. Now we can loop through and call some functions on it. So this is what polymorphism is. It's when you can assign uh, a pointer of a base class type uh, using the uh, inherited class type. And then you can update it. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's do a, a, uh, a for loop here. So what we need to do is use an iterator, because whenever you iterate through a list, you use an iterator. I'm going to create the iterator up here. So to make a liter an iterator to a list, remember you to say the same thing, list monster, colon, colon, iterator. And I'm going to call mine uh, mit for monster iterator. So here we're going to say for mit is equal to monsters.begin. Mit is not equal to monsters.end. Mit plus plus. You probably haven't used lists in a while because I've been using a lot of vectors in these videos. So make sure you have a little refresher uh, look at the video if you forgot what this means. So we're going to loop through uh, the monsters list. And what we should do is update the monsters. So what we would want to do is, for instance, we can say uh, mit arrow, or sorry, star mit remember this will dereference our iterator and then we can say since it's a pointer we can say arrow attack or move because our monster class has attack or move but we want to update spider and goblin why can't we update spider and goblin well because those are methods that they defined these are methods that belong to spider and goblin but not to monster now even though spider and goblin or matthew and sebastian that we pushed back even though they are a type of spider and goblin once we add them to this monster uh, list our program basically doesn't know if they're a spider or a goblin uh, because it's just using a monster pointer that points to them so we can't tell if we should be able to call an update function so the solution to that is we just add an update function to our base class void update and now we can call this update function. However, what's going to happen, so let's go ahead and do that here. We'll say update. So this is going to update all of the monsters. In this case, it's just two. Now, it's going to call this update function, which well, I'll show you. We're going to see out uh, empty update like that because this update function doesn't do anything. Let's go ahead and run it. And this is just going to call empty update two times. And the reason it's doing that is because even though we made this update uh, function in Goblin and Spider that basically override this, they're not actually going to override it. Uh, what we have to do to make it so that these update functions overwrite this update function is to put the virtual keyword in front of it. Vir 
virtual if I can spell there so now this virtual keyword what it does is it tells uh, the compiler that this is a virtual function it's a function that can be overwritten by its derived classes so what's gonna happen is whenever we call the update function uh, what it's gonna do is it's gonna look through and be like okay we're gonna call this function but wait it's a virtual function first let's check to see if this object that we're calling it on is actually a derived class that has its own version and in this case spider and goblin do have their own version so it's going to call that instead so let's go ahead and run it and we should get the correct output and there we go we get matthew the spider is moving attacking climbing sebastian the goblin is moving attacking and so on and so on and that was really really simple so now look at our for loop here this is it this updates all of the monsters that we have and they can each have their own unique update function uh the, that they will uh, be def defining in their class and the monster class just creates a virtual void update uh, that they will overwrite. Now if we wanted to have, for instance, our own attack function, uh, instead of just saying is attacking, maybe we want to stylize that a little bit. Well, we can make this a virtual function, so we can overwrite it. And then I'm going to go and copy this, even though copy pasting can be very dangerous. So this is the new attack function that Spider is going to do, and it's going to be like, he is biting with his fangs. And the goblin's uh, uh, attack function is going to be is slashing with his sword, like that. So now when we run it, since the attack function uh, has been redefined, it's going to get called uh, in the spider class and the goblin class. And actually, we didn't need to make this vo uh, virtual, because the only time we call attack is from inside goblin. And if you have the attack function in goblin, and you call, uh, for instance, uh, we could say, if we said goblin dot attack here it's going to know we're referring to the goblin attack so let's actually make this not virtual so i can illustrate this point real quick so this void attack is defined in monster and goblin has his own attack and so does spider uh, but this isn't a virtual function so this isn't going to overwrite that base one so if we call goblin dot attack here and then i'm going to uh, actually pause the program and you can do that with what's called a breakpoint i'm going to put a breakpoint here so I'm going to run it, and we're going to get goblin.attack is going to get called. So I have to open up the window here. And it says Sebastian the goblin is slashing with his sword. So that's correct. That's what we would expect from a goblin.attack. But what if we use polymorphism? What if we make a monster pointer? And monster. And we'll say monster equals the address of goblin. So we're using polymorphism here. We are saying take a monster pointer and point it to goblin. So now we have this monster, and if we call monster.attack, or arrow attack, because it's a pointer, we're going to get something different. I'm going to run it again. And this time, we'll actually still call the goblin.attack, didn't I? So I still called goblin.attack up here. Let me fix that so I'm illustrating this correctly. Let's run it. All right, so I'm calling monster attack, and it says Sebastian the goblin is attacking which is this attack function, right? Normally, we would want it to say Sebastian the Goblin is slashing with his sword. So if we make it a virtual function, it'll fix that. Uh, but if we're calling the function from inside Goblin, it's uh, going to be fine because it knows it's a Goblin. Well, this is Spider. If we call the function from inside Goblin or from inside Spider, it's going to know to use this function. So this void update right here is going to work correctly, even though our... Um, monster attack function isn't virtual so let me show you that the monster attack function is not virtual we're going to run the game and nothing's going to happen why is nothing happening oh i deleted too much i deleted the pushback so we had no monsters all right let's run it again this time it should work and i clicked on something all right, so there we go. It works correctly. It shows the correct update functions, even though it's not virtual, because once you're inside the goblin class using an update function, then it knows it's a goblin. So it knows to, to call this one. But we're going to make it virtual just because we are definitely intending to overwrite it. So if we ever did try to do the thing where we make just a monster pointer uh, and call it outside the class, we want to make sure it's going to work. 
So that was a pretty big explanation of uh, polymorphism. I hope it made a lot of sense to you. Uh, we definitely used it in a very practical sense. This is, this is probably uh, some way you might want to use it in your game. Though your base class probably isn't going to be monster, what you'll probably have is something like a class entity or something. So Google what entity means, but this is going to be your base because you want to have like some properties that every entity in your game can have, like the ability to be drawn, the ability to like perhaps move around or have a position. And then monster would inherit uh, from entity like this. And then uh, spider and goblin are going to inherit from monster. And since monster inherits from entity, they're also going to be inheriting from entity. Because remember, if we, uh, I'm going to open up paint here. If we have multiple uh, hierarchies of inheritance, it's going to work correctly. So we have, we have entity here, this is the top box, and then we have monster here, and then we have goblin and spider. And it's going to work like this. All of the variables that are and, and methods that are in entity are going to be in uh, monster and in uh, these classes as well. And so what you would normally do is have like an entity class that monster derives from. An entity is going to be, you know, anything that can move around or, you know, maybe do collision with the world. So you might have monster inheriting from entity, player inheriting from entity. Uh, I don't know, anything really that wants to move around, you could inherit from entity. Like maybe a bullet even, though you might, you might have a projectile class that inherits from entity. Uh, you know, you'll find lots of resources online. There's lots of stuff. Uh, if you go to the subreddit rgamedev, if you go there, there's always a lot of really cool stuff. So if you really are serious about becoming a game developer, uh, go to that subreddit. I'll actually put a link to that and the Voxel Game Dev subreddit in the description. And there's a lot, there's a lot of really cool stuff on there uh, that you can read. Uh, and you can also post questions there, and the community will be happy to help you. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I will see you next time.